Hello everyone. Welcome to Noteworthy ENT. This is a series of lectures discussing the topics in ENT and head and neck surgeries, which is basically aimed for students of undergraduate and early postgraduate level. So coming straight to the topic today, I'll be discussing the development of ear, more specifically development of external and middle ears. Before discussing the development of external ear, we should know about the concept of pharyngeal arches. So in the developing embryo by the side of head and neck, there are certain mesodermal condensations known as pharyngeal arches. So these mesodermal con condensations are known as pharyngeal arches. They are six in number initially and with the development, the arch number five, it disappears. So remaining arches are five in number that is one two three four and six the arch number five disappears so covering this mesoderm on the outer side is the ectoderm and the condensate the constriction between the first and second arch is known as on the ectodermal side is known as the pharyngeal groove which is the ectodermal component and on the inside is the pharyngeal pouch, which is the endodermal component depicted in green color. So this was about the pharyngeal arches. Now coming to the development of ear. As we know, ear is divided into three parts, external, middle and inner ear. So external ear comprises of pinna and the external auditory canal. So pinna, the development, it starts at around four weeks of age as tissue condensations of first and second arches so within two further weeks that is around the time of six weeks there develop six ridges known as hillocks of his from these tissue condensations so a total of six hillocks of his are there which are derived from first and second arches now there are various schools of thought as to what comprises or uh, what arises from the hillock surface so the more accepted thought is that first hillock arises from the first arch and rest that is second to six arise from the second arch so with the development of time these hillocks of his start fusing with each other and all the six fuse by the age of around fifth month so this is the adult configuration that is reached by the age of fifth month so uh, this uh, as first hillock is arising from the first arch the more accepted thought is that tragus arises from the first arch so tragus is thought to be the only component from the arising from the first arch whereas the rest of the pinna arises from the second arch now initially as we see with the growing embryo the ear that is the pinna is very low and lateral in location in compared to the developed face but with the growing age the facial components they enlarge there is development of face and the ear reaches its normal position important to note is that there is no further ascent of the pinna but the ascent relative ascent of the pinna is due to the development of the facial structure and this adult size of the pinna is attained by the age of around 8 to 9 years. What are the clinical implications related to the development of external ear? An important one is the development of preauricular sinus. So this preauricular sinus is formed by the faulty fusion between the first and second arch tubercles. So the typical location of uh, preauricular sinus is at the area between the tragus and the crossophallix. This is a typical pit in this location found by faulty fusion between first and second arch tubercles. Another important clinical application is that any surgeries related to repair of microtia and canal atresia is usually taken after six to seven after seven years of age because most of the development of and the external ear is complete by this age. Now coming to the development of external auditory canal, it is derived from the first branchial cleft or the first branchial groove. Now this branchial groove deepens and forms a pit 
that will become the primitive external auditory canal. And for a brief moment in embryological time, the epithelium of the first parenchyal groove and the endoderm of the first parenchyal pouch, they are in contact with each other at the site of the future tympanic membrane. But with time, there is a mesodermal component that separates both these ecto and the endoderm. So the future, that is the mature tympanic membrane, is derived from all the three germinal layers. That is the ectoderm on the outside, endoderm on the inside and mesoderm in between. Now with time, an ectodermal plug, it fills the developing external auditory canal. This is known as the meatal plug. Now, at the age of around 21st week, this meatal plug starts resorbing and this resorption starts from the medial to the lateral end. So, the canalization of the external auditory canal starts from medial and it progresses laterally. So, there may be instances in canal atresia when you will find the canal atresia is localized only to the lateral part and the medial part is Analyzed properly. Now, just recapitulating the development of external auditory canal. The external auditory canal is derived from the first parenchyal cleft or the first parenchyal groove. Now, for a brief time, the endoderm lined by the in the pharyngeal pouch and the ectoderm of the groove are in contact with each other, but these are separated by these mesodermal components at the site of future tympanic membrane. In the canal, on the medial side, there forms ectodermal components known as the meatal plug. Now, around the age of 21st week, this starts canalizing and the canalization is complete at the age of around 28 weeks. Now, progressing to the development of middle ear. Middle ear, uh, the tympanic membrane, as we have already discussed, is formed from all the three germinal layers. Now the adult tympanic membrane, it has three layers. That is the outer epithelial layer, middle fibrous layer, and the inner mucosal layer. So the outer layer is formed from ectoderm, the middle layer from mesoderm, and the inner layer from endoderm. This is the only structure in the human body derived from all the three germinal layers. A middle ear cleft, the middle ear cleft, it comprises of the eustachian tube, the tympanic cavity, the editus and also the mastoid antrum. So the middle ear develops from an extension of the endoderm of the first pharyngeal pouch and this extension is known as tubotympanic recess. So this tubotympanic recess divides into two parts, one is the ventral part and the dorsal part. The eustachian tube is formed from the ventral part and the tympanic cavity is formed from the dorsal part. Now the middle ear ossicles, as we know, middle ear contains three ossicles, the malleus, incus and the stapes. So these ossicles are derived from mesenchymal condensations of first and second pharyngeal arches. So the first two ossicles, that is the malleus and the incus, these are derivatives of the first pharyngeal arch. And the stapes superstructure, stapes consists of a head, uh, two crura anterior and posterior crura and a uh, stapes foot plate. So the stapes superstructure, that is the structure of stapes excluding the foot plate, it is derived from second pharyngeal arch. So malleus and incus from first arch, stapes superstructure from second arch. The rest of the stapes, that is the foot plate and the annular ligament, they are derived from the OT capsule. So this completes the development of external and middle ears.